Okay, we've been working with radicals. Let's start looking at them in equations. Of course, we're going to have to know how to solve the equations that contain radicals. Some tricks we already know about radicals. A radical, or a square root, undoes a square. See, it gets rid of the square. In the same way, we can get rid of a square root by squaring the expression. Both of these uh, expressions, if you would, or, or actions, squaring and square roots, we can call inverses of each other, because they kind of undo each other. So, we'll use this to solve equations that contain radicals. What we'll do is isolate the radical, get it by itself in other words, then raise each side of the equation to the power of the index of the radical. Now the index of the radical is is the little number up there at the top left of the radical. Now in a square root it's not there but it's inferred that it's 2. In a cube root it would be 3. In a fourth root it would be 4, etc. So we're going to raise each side to that power and then just solve normally. Now it's going to be critical in these problems that you check the answers because some of them even though they look right are not going to work. So let's look at one. We'll start with an easy one. At this point the radical if you would, the radical part of the equation is already isolated. It's already by itself. So we've already done step one. So we'll get rid of it by squaring uh, or raising to the power of the index, in this case which is a 2. Have to do it to both sides. Now on the left side, all the 2 will do is get rid of the radical. It's the inverse, remember? And on the right side, we'll get 81. Now we just solve normally by getting x alone. Let's see. I'll add 3 to both sides, and let's see who's keeping x from being alone. The 2 is multiplying, so I'll divide both sides, and x in this case will equal 42. Now remember the last step. Don't do it because I said so. Do it because sometimes, I think I'm going to show you in a little bit, some of these aren't going to work. And this certainly looks like it's going to work. Let's put 42 in instead of x. Remember the order of operations tells you to do your multiplication first. So we get 2 times 42, 84 minus 3, and 84 minus 3 is 81, and the square root of 81 is, in fact, the right side of the equation. As soon as the left side equals the right side, that's what you're hoping for to check the answer to make it work. Okay? So that one worked out, and I think that wasn't too bad. Let's try one a little bit more difficult. Oh, before we do that, by the way, when you're checking the square root of a number, for instance, we know the square root of 81 can be 9, yeah, I know that, dude. can also be negative 9, can it? Well, when checking, and I'm not really going to be able to tell you the reason for this because it really involves calculus, we're not going to use plus or minus. We're only going to use the positive square root, okay? Illogical. I know, but we're only going to use the positive square root when we're checking. Okay, so let's try a little bit more difficult problem. Now this one does not have the radical by itself. So what are we going to have to do to get it by itself? Who's keeping it from being by itself? Well, the 3x. So let's subtract 3x from both sides to get the radical by itself, or isolate it. That'll get rid of him. 
And now we've isolated the radical. Don't forget, you're going to square both sides. Okay, that's a common mistake. And squaring and square rooting are inverses. So nicely on the left side, all we have is the same expression minus the radical. And on the right side, recall that a negative times a negative is a positive, and we have 9x squared. Now in this problem, it becomes quadratic because of the x squared. We're going to try to use the zero property. So we're going to try to get it zero on the left side. I'm going to add the opposites of everybody. And on the left side, everybody will go away, but don't be afraid. Write that zero. Okay, zero is a number. You can write it. And on the right side, all them, all the terms are, or, or expressions are uh, unlike terms. So I just write it. Now the zero property requires factoring. Okay, and I'll do that. Now this is going to have two answers. The first one, the first factor, x plus one, tells me that x has got to be. It's going to be minus 1, because that's what I put in for x to make it 0. And on the 9x plus 1, that one's going to be minus 1 ninth. Okay, now, so I really have two possible answers to this equation. But remember the last step of solving radical equations I can do that, but I don't want is to check one. Let's check each. Now, this has two x's, so let's and two answers. Let's put our first answer, negative 1, in for each of them. Let's see what we get. Negative 10 times negative 1 is uh, 10, and then 10 minus 1 is 9. So I get the square root of 9. And the other expression is going to be minus 3, 3 times negative 1. Now the square root of 9, remember what I told you, we're only going to use the positive square root is positive 3 minus 3 does equal 0. You are correct, sir. So there's one correct answer. Let's try the other one. Be careful here. Putting in a minus 1 ninth in each case, recall that minus 10 is really minus 10 over 1. So we're going to multiply there and get 10 ninths. And 1 is 1 is 9 ninths, so 10 ninths minus 9 ninths is 1 ninth. And the square root of 1 ninth is 1 third. We uh, reduce there the minus 3 ninths to minus 1 third. Let's take the square root, and 1 third and negative 1 third yeah. was difficult, but it does check. The left side does equal the right side, so this one does work as well. So we have two answers in this. So note that you could have two answers in any of these equations. How about this one? Doesn't look that bad, does it? Remember how to begin. Isolate the radical. Who's keeping him from being by itself? The 5. So I subtract 5 from both sides. And I get on the left side, just the radical, and on the right side, negative 2. Now You might already smell a problem here because we're taking a square root and getting a negative, but let's see. We're going to square both, both sides, and on the left side, we'll just get x plus 1 because it undid the radical, and on the right side, a positive 4, negative times negative now. All we have to do is solve normally, subtract 1 from both sides, and in this case, x will equal 4 minus 1 or 3. And you're gonna do it because I, said so. I think you want to check this one. Let's put in that 3 instead of x into the original equation and see if the left side equals the right side. 3 plus 1, of course, is 4. And the square root of 4 is 2 
2 plus 5 equals 7. Uh-oh, it didn't work. And sometimes it's not going to work. So make sure that you check. So what would I write for the answer here? Well, sometimes the answer... Sometimes the answer is that there is no answer. So the answer is no answer. I think in the software, sometimes they want you to write an N. So get used to that. Be looking for that. Be afraid. What happened? Now let me review the steps again, because they are a little tricky. Remember what we start. We isolate the radical. And I want to point out here that we don't always square each side. What we said that we always do is we always raise each side to the power of the index of the radical. Then we solve normally. Then we check the answer, remember. Okay? Now, this is kind of weird, isn't it? Raise it to the index of the radical. That's what I want to show you here. See, now watch. In this case, me? we've got a cube root. So squaring both sides is not going to help us. We're still going to isolate the radical by subtracting 5 from both sides. Now what are we going to do? No, squaring it is not going to work, is it? It's not going to undo the cube root. This is a cube root. What we'll have to do is raise it not to the squared, but to the index of the radical. What is the index? 3. So we'll raise it. Now we're going to have to raise it to the third power. Of course, if we do it on the left side, we have to do it on the right side. Get the idea what I mean by the index of the radical? It's not that bad. So on the left side, It'll still get rid of the radical. And on the right side, you'll have to remember, at least in this problem, to cube. And that's negative 8. Now let's see. Subtract 1 from both sides. And we get x equals negative 9. And you're gonna do it because I said so. Let's put it in see if it works. The cube root Let's see, negative 9 plus 1. Negative 9 plus 1 is negative 8. The cube root of negative 8 is, in fact, negative 2. Now, we're not dealing with two answers here anymore. Cube roots only have one answer, and certainly it is negative 2. And negative 2 plus 5 does equal the right side, 3. Okay, so... We don't always square it. Sometimes, and what we always do is we always raise it to the index of the radical, and that'll be the secret here. Okay? Isolate the radical. Raise each side to the power of the index of the radical, whatever that might be. Then solve normally. Then check the answer. Okay. It's your turn. Let's go to work. Get to that homework.